talent. There was a reason why they were scouted and they were brought in here and put in the system to develop, but now we're seeing exactly what they can do. And I, I think Mitch Garver is a great example of that, but you really could go up and down the lineup. I mean, the other guy, Jorge Polanco, when a, you got a shortstop with a near 1,000 OPS, I mean, that's uh, superstar in territory, and, and I don't know if he's been talked about a whole lot this year as a superstar, but the guy is up at the top of the league in, in batting average, and uh, I didn't really expect him to elevate his game to that type of status. I thought he was a solid player, but um, now you're looking at somebody who is probably going to be in the All-Star game, and, and that was a little bit unexpected for me. 100%. Uh, um, w- let's talk a little bit about Rocco Baldelli and the job he's done. How much credit do you give him a- what has he changed? Is it a culture thing? Is it an approach thing? Talk a little bit about Rocco Baldelli. How much credit does he deserve in all of this? Well, Rocco Baldelli is a really interesting example of just how the landscape is changing of managers in Major League Baseball because, you know, they show him in the dugout on TV and he's kind of just standing there a lot. And, you know, you come out and make a couple of pitching changes. It's the American League. So, you know, you're not – double switching and, and things like that. I, I think that what Rocco Baldelli is, has done the best is a, um, he, he's brought everyone together. And also, you know, one of the interesting things that, uh, we've heard about Rocco Baldelli is that his approach is basically whatever works for you, for players. So it's not, you have to be here at this time and do exactly this, exactly what I say. This is kind of that older school attitude. It's more of, Every player is different. Every player has their own process right. to be a successful major leaguer. And we're going to let you do what you need to do before the game with how much BP you want to take, how many swings off a tee, and all those sorts of things. I, I think that that uh, approach, uh, treating these guys like professionals who know what they're doing, has been a really good one. I think his age is really helpful. Someone who is just recently in Major League Baseball and a good player, um, but also understands the current culture and grew up in an analytics era so he can help uh, implement these things that the front office is trying to do. So I, I think that the way we evaluate managers is changing in Major League Baseball, and right now uh, I think you have to say Rocco Baldelli has done a great job. Yeah, Baldelli definitely seems, I was reading some articles yesterday, definitely seems like a player's coach, definitely seems, and, and this is part of why I think even in professional sports you're starting to see these organizations bring in these younger guys because – I think the biggest thing is being able to relate to them, being able to, you know, talk to these younger guys. And his approach is, well, I trust what you're, you know, I trust you're going to put in your work. Do I care when you come in? Not exactly. Just make sure the work's done. Um, pitching wise, and this is where I get uh, just a little worried. I, I don't, I don't know if I'm, I'm comfortable going into the postseason with Jake Odorizzi, who's been great. Who, uh, you know, Barreros, who's been great. Uh, Perez obviously has been the surprise. And, you know, Pineda and Gibson are, you know, I, I, they're all overachieving in my, in my opinion. Do you think that this pitching staff is good enough to make some tor- sort of run, or would you rather see them get a Keuchel? Give me your thoughts on the pitching rotation. Well, I, I think that they need to get more pitching, uh, whether it's the rotation or the bullpen. And uh, you saw from the Rays blowout of the Twins with Martin Perez on the mound that, that I'm not sure that's really sustainable for Martin Perez. No. Shout out to a great start. One of the things that we have to consider with the great starts of Odorizzi and Perez is the schedule that this team has played. The Rays and the Brewers – are the first teams that have been winners that they've played against since early May. I mean, most of the month was against the bottom of the league type of teams. And, of course, you know, they beat the tar out of those teams, and they should. But we also have to recognize that when Martin Perez and Jake Odorizzi were running out there, they were very rarely facing good lineups. And that's – I think we – uh, we'll start to see with Odorizzi him drift back a little bit, and we definitely saw that with Martin Perez, and that would be my expectation throughout the summer is that those guys kind of regress to what they really are, and that still might mean that Perez is a really good find. If he has a four ERA through the season, then great job at going out and getting somebody that nobody wanted and making him into a decent starter. But if you're going into a postseason game, which is nice for Twins fans, they get to look at everything through the lens 
of the playoffs and World Series. You get to say that out loud, at least for right now. Yeah. And, uh, they, but, but the team, when you get a chance to win in Major League Baseball, I think you have to take it, especially when your team is healthy, because you never know how long that's going to last. And so, you know, the, the Keiko conversation, the uh, Craig Kimbrell conversation, Marcus Stroman, Madison Bumgarner, I think that they should be making phone calls on every one of those guys. And you're exactly right. And that's how I want to talk about it today. You're in a position right now where no one expected you to be. And sports, it's like you look at kind of the Raptors right now. They went all in, right? And we were talking about it yesterday, who's got more pressure, the Warriors or the Raptors? And I said the Raptors because – you don't know when the next time you're going to be in this position. You, you don't. You, Kawhi's probably going to leave. You don't know when you're going to be in the NBA Finals again. And obviously the Twins aren't in the World Series. But the Twins are 19 games over 500 and have obviously completely overachieved. If you're in this position, why not go get a Madison, Madison Bumgarner? Why not get a Craig Kimbrough? Why not get a Dallas Keuchel? Because the Twins especially have shown that you can make the playoffs one year and then the next year you're going to miss the playoffs. I mean, they, that's what they did the last couple of years here. So I 100% agree with that. Um, what is the peak for this team? Like, I know we're dreaming here. We're talking about World Series. What do you think the peak for this team is? Do you think they can compete with the Astros, Yankees, and, and Red Sox? Well, I think I've got to see what they do in terms of trades to really know that. At this moment, I see them behind the Astros, maybe on an even plane with the Yankees. But remember, the Yankees have done this while being mostly injured throughout oh, yeah. the first half of the season and, yep. and how impressive is it that they're in the position they're still in. I would also put this Rays team in that conversation too. The Rays are number one in Major League Baseball and ERA and they have a great rotation and bullpen. Anytime you have that, you are very dangerous when it comes to the postseason. And, and I think that they're more on even playing with the Rays, even playing with the Yankees and then behind the Astros. But they're one trade away from me saying, no, I think that they're the best team in the American League. And that is a very rare position to be in. But, you know, I, I do think it's a tricky balance because you have a prospect like Royce Lewis that you really don't want to uh, part ways with because he was your number one overall pick and it's just uh, been good so far through the minor leagues. But if someone comes to you with a superstar pitcher for Royce Lewis, I think you have to even consider that with where you're at because of exactly what you said. You only get so many shots, even if you've rebuilt a good team, you only get so many shots to be one of the best teams in Major League Baseball. So I think we do have to let this play out a little more. I like seeing them play against the Brewers and the Rays. It reveals what weaknesses are there because, you know, I don't think you see your weaknesses very much when you play the Chicago White Sox. So, no. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think this is a good opportunity for them to look at a, a series against the Rays and uh, against the Brewers and assess exactly what they have and what they need to trade for. Exactly right. And I think that's big. That probably the biggest critique of this team is who have they played? They beat up on the bad teams. And like you pointed out, you do have to beat these bad teams. You got to just smash them. You got to three out of four, you know, sweeps. You, you can't lose to those teams. Last one here for you, Matt. Who is closer? to winning a championship in your mind? The Vikings or the Twins right now? Uh, that's a good question. I, I think because I know the standings through a couple of months, I would say the Twins. I don't know what the Vikings are going to do uh, You know, through what would be comparable, maybe like four or five weeks in, four or in the five, NFL. Yeah. You know, but there was one time where the Vikings were 5-0, and oh, and then another time I think they were 6-0 and oh and missed playoffs in both of those. So it does happen. Uh, to answer your question, I think it is – the Twins, because it is baseball, and once you get to the playoffs, everybody's got a shot. And when you have the best lineup that also does not strike out a lot, I think that's a really key point for what this lineup could look like in the playoffs when you face good pitchers. If you're not striking out a lot, I think you've got a really good chance. And if they improve the pitching, I mean, you, you could totally see it happening. With the Vikings, there are so many good teams that I think are on an even plane with them. So maybe with the Twins, you have two, three, four teams. I think with the Vikings, you're probably talking about maybe more like 10, 12 teams that are on the same plane as them. So I, I would have to go with the Twins. I, th I think the Vikings will have to have a lot of things go right for them to go deep in the playoffs. Matthew Collar, the host of ScoreNorth.com. Matt, thank you very much. Also, follow Matt on Twitter. At Matthew Collar, great stuff as always, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Thanks. And I know it sounded a little raspy in the uh, in the interview with Matthew Collar, but I, I need to figure out a way to. I, I obviously don't have a phone um, 
in my home studio. So my lovely producer, Matt, came up with the idea of doing Google Voice, which, look, it works. I mean, you guys are able to hear that. It's not as obviously clear as it is at school, but it, right now school is closed. I'm done with school. I am in the summer now. So this is how it's going to be with the interviews. Um, so hopefully it isn't too much of an inconvenience, but that's what we got here. Great job, as always, by Matthew Collar. Okay, so Twins Talk. This is so weird because, like, last year the Twins were so irrelevant. And, like, I always say this about baseball. For me, at least, it was it's always Wild Vikings for me, 1-2, and it's not really close. Twins, obviously, are creeping up, um, but for baseball, it was always just keep me entertained. Just keep me entertained through August, so then when the Vikings go to training camp, uh, I'm excited, and you just carry me. Into, that's why when the, even when the Twins made it to the wild card against the Yankees, I wasn't that upset when they lost. Obviously, I hate the Yankees, but still, they keep you entertained until the real season, until the varsity, which is the Vikings and Wild, in my opinion. Maybe not the Wild next year, but um, now that they're this good, it's almost like, okay, they are for real. I wanted to talk about a move because I think there's a lot of names swirling around. I think you showed me that Dallas Keuchel, the front runner, is the New York Yankees. My buddy Matt, my producer Matt, told me that the Keuchel is the front runner for the Yankees, and... Look, I, I know they were interested in him, and I know they're interested in Craig Kimbrell. But to me, there's one guy that if they if the Twins go out and they and they they're gonna have to pay a good price. They're gonna have to give away a guy like Nick Gordon. They're gonna have to give away a guy like Royce Lewis, who I don't want to give away. But I think he's going to come at a high price, and, and that is Madison Bumgarner. Now, if you don't know who Madison Bumgarner is, um, just when I tell you, he's just a dominant postseason pitcher and he's having an okay this year this year you really have to look at what he's he's done this year first of all the the Giants are terrible um he's 29 years old three-time World Series champ some of these numbers are you know hold your breath here he has a career World Series ERA of 0.25 0.25 he's pitched 52 and two-thirds innings in a single postseason I mean there was an there was a point where he was coming out of the bullpen after he started the last day for the Giants in this postseason 2.11 ERA in 102 postseason innings this is the guy this is the guy and he he's going to be a free agent after this year he has a reputation of being a workhorse he is a proven champion and he is exactly what the twins need to fortify their pitching rotation okay now like I said his regular season stats right now you're gonna look at them and I don't know how you feel about the whole win-loss thing I, I think wins and losses in baseball are uh, it's it's skewed and same thing with hockey as well because um, it's you know a guy can give up six goals and if you the other your team scores seven you get a win with with baseball it's sort of the same way and especially when your team stinks over his last seven starts, which is 43 innings, he has a 48 to seven strikeout to walk ratio. Okay, um, with more than seven strikeouts and two or fewer walks five times. So obviously, Bumgarner, you look at his win and loss wise, which is a rookie move. You say, oh, he's not very good. Oh, he's not. He's a Madison Bumgarner has to be in a Twins uniform. If they want me to take him serious in actually making a postseason run, because he is the guy missing. Don't tell me that Jose Barrero. You trust you trust Jose Barreros, Kyle Gibson, Jake Odorizzi, Martin Perez in in at Yankee Stadium, or better than Michael Pineda. Do you trust them when you need to go win a game to go to Yankee Stadium to go to Houston and win that game? You're crazy if you think that. The Twins are clearly batting wise, they've been great. And pitching wise, they've been great. But if you, if I had to guess which one's going to cool down quicker, it's by far the pitching. I do not trust the pitching. Um, obviously, they've had, like I said, they've had a, a phenomenal year, but they are going to cool down. And for them to go and get Madison Bumgarner, that is telling me, that is telling you, that is telling the world that we are all in. And we were talking about it before, me and Matt Collar, that you look at Toronto, Toronto Raptors. Let's switch sports real quick. They went all in. They went and got Kawhi. They went and get Marcus Gasol. And we asked the question, who has more pressure, the Warriors or the Raptors? And I told you, the Toronto Raptors have more pressure because you know why? One reason, you don't know when you'll be back here again. You have zero idea. 
The Twins have zero idea. The Twins made the playoffs two years ago, and then they and then they they missed the playoffs and had a terrible terrible year. Now they are in position, nineteen games over five hundred, nine and a half up in the Central, where they have an opportunity. 